Hello everyone, I am Sahiti. Welcome back to my channel. I am here in this video with another topic that is respiratory balance sheet. In this respiratory balance sheet, we will see the net gain of ATP in the whole respiration process. There are three ways how ATPs are formed. First is from substrate level phosphorylation, second from NADH plus H plus, third from FADH2. These NADH plus H plus and FADH2 pass through the electron transport system and form 3 ATP and 2 ATP respectively. I have written some short forms here. Let us elaborate them first. DHAP is dihydroxyacetone phosphate. G3P is glycerol dehyde 3 phosphate. 1,3 BPGA is bisphosphoglyceric acid. PGA is phosphoglyceric acid. PEP is phosphoenol pyruvic acid and PA is pyruvic acid. Now we will calculate the net gain of ATP in glycolysis. From glucose to glucose 6-phosphate, there is utilization of 1 ATP. And from fructose 6-phosphate to fructose 1,6 bisphosphate, there is utilization of another ATP molecule. From glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate to 1,3 bisphosphoglyceric acid, oxidative phosphorylation occurs. So here, NADH plus H plus is released. As isomerization took place here, from here onwards there are two molecules. So if 1 G3P gives 1 NADH plus H plus, 2 G3P gives 2 NADH plus H plus. From 1,3 bisphosphoglyceric acid to 3 phosphoglyceric acid, there is release of 1 ATP. As there are two molecules, 2 ATP are released. From phosphoenol pyruvic acid to pyruvic acid, there is release of another ATP molecule. As there are two phosphoenol pyruvic acids, two ATP are formed. In total, there are two plus two, four ATP formed and two ATP are utilized. So the net gain would be four minus two, that is two ATP molecules. Plus, here there are two NADH plus H plus release. They will pass through electron transport system and give two into three, six ATP. So the net gain of ATP in glycolysis would be 8 ATP. Coming to the link reaction, from pyruvic acid to acetyl coenzyme A, there is release of 1 NADH plus H plus. As there are 2 pyruvic acids, 2 NADH plus H plus are released. So, the net gain of ATP in link reaction would be 2 into 3, 6 ATP. Now, coming to the Krebs cycle, oxidative decarboxylation occurs here and here. So, 2 NADH plus H plus are released in these two steps. Other 2 NADH plus H plus are released in this step. From succinic acid to fumaric acid, there is release of 2 FADH2. And from succinyl coenzyme A to succinic acid, one substrate level phosphorylation occurs. So, here 2 ATP are formed. If we calculate the total, 2 plus 2 plus 2, 6 NADH plus H plus gives 6 into 3, 18 ATP. 2 FADH2 gives 2 into 2, 4 ATP. And directly 2 substrate level phosphorylations, so 2 ATP. The total is 24 ATP. So, the net gain of ATP in a Krebs cycle is 24. If we calculate the total net gain of ATP, 8 plus 6 plus 24, this will come out to be 38 ATP. So the net gain of ATP in whole respiration process is 38 ATP. There are some conditions for this whole process to take place. The first one is, the process should take place one after the other in a sequential order of glycolysis, Krebs cycle and ETS pathway. The second point, the NADH plus H plus formed in the cytoplasm during glycolysis should be transported to the mitochondria. Third one, only glucose should be used as a substrate. Fourth one is, no compounds should be withdrawn in the middle of the process. But in the reality, these conditions won't work as it is. NCRT itself says that, we have to calculate the net gain of ATP to just appreciate the beauty and efficiency of the living system. 
we have to read ncrt because there is at least one question from this chapter in the neat exam that's all for today hit that thumbs up button if you like the video share it with your fellow neat aspirants also subscribe to the channel for many more videos i will see you in the next one thank you